First, read Isaiah 6, reverence for God, and after, read Matthew 12. In the book of Isaiah, in Isaiah 6, chapter 6, it says how there's an, a syphilim, and the syphilim comes down and lays a coal from the altar onto Isaiah's lips. Because God is looking for somebody to deliver the message, and Isaiah even says, I'll do it. Like, send me. I'll do it. And I don't know. As a person, like, who's trying to follow God and try to stick with God, it's very, very hard It's called to carry that cross. So for you to have the courage to speak out and say, send me to do your message, to deliver your message, it's like you're taking on such a big task and you're having the courage, the patience, the wisdom to do it. And only with God are you able to do so. So Isaiah, like I, I hear what he's doing. I'm reading what he's doing and I'm like, ooh, Isaiah, Isaiah has it in him. You have to get to the, that part where you're like ready to say, God send me. Like, I'm good. Cleanse me of everything and send me to do and deliver your message. Because I still mess up a lot. I st you know? But, um, I don't know. Giving up that self to him to go and deliver that message, I don't know. I think it's really cool. And I'm reading Matthew 12 right now. I'm still not done with it. But so far, it's saying how even how anybody should be able to heal and work on the Sabbath day when it requires it. You know, just because it's a bath day doesn't mean that you can't help. You should always be willing and able to help somebody. Helping others brings you closer to the Lord. Why should it be that only on Sundays you can't help? If a sheep were to fall into a pit on a Sabbath on Sunday and you see it and you don't help it, are you no better than the sheep? No, get in there, grab the sheep and take it out and you're good to go. It's, it's Sunday, but you can still help. I don't know, just the way of thinking back then compared to now, like I'm still gonna help you anyways. And then it says how Jesus helped somebody by casting out a demon from them. And the Pharisees were like, oh, oh, you casted out demons, you're the prince of demons, me, me. And then Jesus was like, how? If, if, how, if Satan were to divide Satan, like, well, like, that makes no sense. You guys are so dumb. This is blasphemy. Like you're being blasphemous towards the Holy Spirit towards the Holy Ghost and that's unforgivable like you're criticizing somebody that is doing good and helping people you know be careful with what words you're saying because one day you're going to be judged too and then it says the Pharisees were like master well you would give us a sign and it's like there's not gonna be a sign that's gonna be given to you an, ad an adulterous and evil generation seeks a sign and there shall be no sign given to it you shouldn't seek signs you should just know you should just believe that he's got you that the holy spirit that god has got you that jesus loves you like jonah when he was in the whale he was in the whale for three days and three nights not knowing where he was going but he knew that god was going to take him exactly where he needed to be so he wasn't really worried he was just trusting in god he was knowing that god has got him and he didn't need to look for signs and search for signs he was in the belly of a whale don't go out looking for signs. Just stay patient and know that God is going to lead you exactly where you need to be. But keep looking to him. And then it says how the queen of the south will travel so far to go and listen to the wisdom of King Solomon. But here is the man who has the wisdom of God. Don't go out looking so many different places when he's right here in front of you. Don't get stressed. Don't get anxious about it. Just look unto him because he knows it all. And then it talks about the unclean spirit, right? and how the unclean spirit will leave you. It's like, you have something in you that you're not okay with, and it just leaves, you don't give it to God, right? And it goes and searches in so many different places for some place to feel like home, but it's just in this dry desert the entire time, searching and searching and finding nothing. And when it comes back to you, it's still in such an empty place, full of sadness like i don't know these words are heavy like it's so sad and if you'd never return to god right if you never deliver your your spirit to god um you return to yourself but then seven other wicked even more wicked spirits come to you and those are the sin you know that's when we start getting into this really really bad state of depression of of uh, addiction greed start lying start manipulating people even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation and there's some people who never give their spirit to god and this same people in this generation are going to be found in the next and in the next and in the next and the next and there's never ends 
So that's why it's important for us to plant the seed into other people and to help other people. But also to trust in God. That Jesus has the wisdom of God. So trust in God and trust in Jesus. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's how we at least decrease the people that are in that very, very bad state in every single generation. That never find home for their spirit. And then Matthew 12 ends with Jesus saying that anybody who follows uh, God's wisdom is his brother and his sister and his mother. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Obedience is thicker than blood. The person who obeys God's will is my brother and sister and mother. And I have like 2 minutes and 30 seconds to read some parables, so that's what I'm going to do. The Parable of the Lamp, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The Parable of the Speck and the Log, Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take out the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, because the knowledge and the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. And if you made it this far and understood what I'm trying to say or what the book has said, this is for you. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The seed falling on rocky grounds refers to someone who hears the word at once and receives it with joy, but since they have no root, it only lasts a short time. When the trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of his life and his disciplesness of wealth choke the word making it unfruitful. But if the seed falls on good soil, it refers to someone to but the seed who falls on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Sorry for speeding, thanks for listening and understanding the word of God.